Blood Rain, Curse of the Yoma, which is also called Yoma Ghosts, and Curse of the Undead Yoma is a Japanese anime that has been made by Takashi Anno. A terrible war has ravaged the land, and now fueled by blood of numerous fallen warriors, the Yoma. Demons from hell emerge once more. A skilled ninja seeks to end the bloodshed. These demons afflict upon humanity. But to do this, he must fight against his former friend and fellow ninja who was killed in battle and has been resurrected to serve the Yoma. This anime really fucked with me a lot. Now, people may know this by my reviews, but I have and I am still on a hunt for watching and collecting animes that played a very big place in my heart. And I'm trying to find the animes that I've watched as a kid that I can remember. Some animes I need to know the names of or at least know how they look for me to think that maybe these are the anime, this is the anime that I have watched so I can watch it again and then review it to you guys to show you if it's worth watching or at least worth staying away from. So far, I've been hitting pretty hard. But there was an anime that really stood out for me as a kid. And I remember watching it because every single Friday, there's a channel that always um, show animes at 11 o'clock at night. And it's a channel that always just show like real movies and real shows and stuff. But on that particular day on Friday at 11 o'clock PM, they would just show an anime or show anime series. And I remember I was in punishment and I was restricted to watch any animes to the whole weekend. And they have cut the cable in my room. <laughs> but that didn't stop me. When I was downstairs late at night, and it was around 10.50 p.m., my grandfather used to always fall asleep at 10.45. So I snuck downstairs, and he was asleep. So I thought it was a perfect chance for me to watch an anime while he's, in, you know, while he's knocked out. So right when 11 o'clock hit, I turned it to the channel, 343, still remember the, still remember the goddamn number of the channel. And um, I was hoping it would be Fist of the North Star. I was hoping maybe it might be Evangelion this time. Maybe it might be X. Maybe it might be Berserk. But instead, I watched this anime that was literally something that I was not ready for. This anime was scary. This anime was traumatizing. This anime was literally a nightmare and it gave me nightmares. And this is the anime that I'm referring to. Blood Rain caught me off guard. And some people may say that this is, this is what my black ass get for, <laughs> for watching animes where I'm not supposed to. And I can agree. But let's just say now as I'm an adult and I'm watching this anime now, just for a review perspective and for a revisit, nothing has changed. This anime is still traumatizing. So scary to the point where I can see people telling their, their kids this type of story or gathering around in a bonfire and just telling them a fucked up story like this. This anime will fuck you up dramatically. The anime starts off pretty fresh when it comes to them showing you the art style and the art detail of the anime. This anime feels like it was made in the 1980s and the early 90s, as you're getting pulled by the atmosphere and the character design. I love the way how the anime pulls you in when it comes to the midday sunset of the anime and just how the facial expressions of these characters are looking. But, they also want you to be aware of how creepy and how nightmarish this anime is. While the characters and certain people in this anime in the beginning of it 
is and you begin to notice that they are surrounded by bodies dead bodies and you begin to feel the tensity as the music begins to kick in and then people fallen warriors are beginning to die and then all of a sudden all hell breaks loose as the yoma and the undead begins to rise from the grave in a slow manner and the music begins to make you feel quenched as you begin to clench the goddamn cover as you watch it get in the bed I felt that way, and I felt that this anime was literally giving me, give me those traumatic feels again as a kid, especially when it showed the Yoma and the zombies looking directly towards the screen, and it shows you the actual introduction of the anime logo, letting you know what the name of the anime is called. I thought it was perfect. I thought it was great, beautiful, and at the same time, it really fucked with me, which is the meaning of my beautiful madness. By them showing you the aspect of how the anime looks and how the anime sounds when it comes to the details of you getting pulled in by the cinematography and the horror aspects to it, the anime is actually great when it comes to the pacing of these characters. I really cared about the main character, Hikage. Hikage is the main character of the anime, and his, base, his motive is actually pretty simple. He is one of the warriors of this anime, and all he's trying to do is he's just trying to find his best friend, Maru. And Maru is one of the main people who has caused this whole outbreak to happen, or maybe he is a part of it. I don't want to spoil too much, but Hikage's main purpose is to get his best friend, or at least rescue him, or if not, try to find answers. And as he's trying to find answers, we stumble across so much material on this anime to the point where you be on the edge of your seat, you want more of the details of this anime, or at the same time, you fear for the life of, of, of Hikage because even though he's a skilled warrior and it shows you the creativity of how he takes down the enemies by him being a skilled warrior that does not mean that these enemies are easy to defeat these Yoma are freaking insane so much so to the point where each time he fights them you be on the edge of your seat or at the same time you be dramatically fucked up in the brain of just how many times they can transform, how many times they can die, how can they fuck with enemies, and at the same time how can they attack the certain people that they're coming up against. I was fearing for Hakage's life so much to the point where I was like, man, I don't think knives, shurikens, and a blade may work because some of these enemies can shapeshift, some of these enemies can hide, some of these enemies can blend in the environment, some of these enemies can be disguised as human beings, which means that you cannot trust nobody in this anime and when it comes to their ballistics they can use certain varieties of their techniques when it comes to them being spiders snakes or just trees the yoma on this anime is fucking brutal with blood rain they show you the slow pacing intensity of these demons to the point where again you be afraid especially when you watch it at night and there are scenes on this anime that makes you feel that intensity. And it's not just by fighting the demons or the Yoma. It's by the atmosphere itself. There are times where Hakage will go in certain areas and it'll be filled with undead. It'll be filled with Yoma. Or the atmosphere itself will pull him in to the point where he feels as if he should not be there or he's unwelcome. And this is all because of him just trying to find out where his best friend Maro is. And it shows me that he would do anything he can to try to find him and at least try to rescue him. But at the same time, I was I was like, dude, come on, man. You and I both know that you should not be here right now. Shouldn't you get back up at this point? Because, man, this anime will make you feel as if you won't be able to do this by himself. And he wasn't able to do it by himself. Thankfully, we end up having a side character, which is Aya. That, in my opinion... She pulled her weight pretty well. I liked that her character. She was a strong, witty character, especially when she showed up out of nowhere as she was being chased by these bandits. I thought that her character was well polished and well executed, especially when it comes to her helping out Takage, because as she shows up, the enemies end up being more tougher, more advanced, and more deadly. And I was still on the verge of just thinking if he, if he and I would make it out alive, and things end up being more creepy. And that's what I liked about the anime is that the pacing itself does it well when it comes to the ex execution of us being introduced with new characters, new side characters, 
new enemies and new ways for us to be entertained when it comes to the fear aspect, the action aspect, the drama aspect, and just being scared and being on the edge of our seat. The atmosphere of this anime does well when it comes to you getting pulled in with a fear aspect and you just being on the edge of your seat completely. The sound of this anime, the soundtrack of this anime does it well. If I have to rate the anime with the soundtrack itself, I'm going to give it an A+. Plus because not one song, not one track on this anime has thrown me off. Even the introduction and the introduction of this anime. And if that's not enough... Even when I was in the freaking DVD menu, I was still feeling creeped out as they, as they was playing a track on there that just made me feel uncomfortable. And it was it, it, it was just like a sync intensity vibe song, you know, like a vibe track. And at the same time, I was hearing like some type of snapping noises, snapping effects, like some people was dying in the background. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I dare you guys to buy this DVD and play the title of the anime before you play it six times at three o'clock in the morning i'm just playing don't do that as for the ending of this anime i thought the ending was great i thought it was well polished not perfect but at the same time it was acceptable this anime is indeed a masterpiece i'm surprised no one is talking about this anime but by me saying this is a masterpiece, does this mean that this anime is untouchable when it comes to the criticism? Does it mean that this anime is perfect? Does this mean that this anime is worthy of an A-plus legendary rating? <sighs> Sadly, no. Now, I wanted to really give this anime the highest rating possible. But that's because of what it has done to me as a kid and what it has continually doing to me now as an adult. But there are things that I really have to point out that I have noticed in the anime, and that is the lack of innovation with each of the characters. Each of them are lacking character innovation to the point where it makes you question what's their drive in the first place, even the main character, Hikage himself. Now, I did mention that the drive of his character does pull you in for you to know that he is trying to rescue his friend and get answers. But at the same time, we don't know enough to care about his drive and to care about his motivation. Because Hikage and Maru, they are allegedly best friends. And they don't really show too much of the memory of how they was before shit ended up hitting the fan. All they show is the past of them just running in the goddamn like grass and stuff as they were children. That's it. Maru's innovation of how he became evil was... I end up understanding it, but it was way too rushed. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil too much. You understand it, but you don't feel the gravitation of why he became evil and why things end up happening in the first place. We end up liking his character as him being a child, but I feel like we needed more to see his drive what brought him into the brink of darkness in the first place and why he abandoned all hope. Aya's reason, <laughs> Aya's innovation was. I feel like. They was doing very good when it comes to the polishing of this anime. And they knew that they needed a love interest of this anime. They needed a female that would fall in love with a guy. And that's Aya's character. And her, and I don't mind that. But I feel like her reasons, there was no reason. She fell in love with Hikage. Um, and I don't even know why. What happened was how they ended up meeting was um, Hikage was in deep depression and he was just busy just chilling in the beach and all of a sudden she shows up and again all these bandits started showing up, showing up and trying to kill her he saves her life by telling her to jump don't jump in the water and all of a sudden she grown attached to him and she ended up having a female boner for him they never explain Aya's reason why she ended up loving Hikage on here now some people may explain some people may say that love happens when you at least expect it I believe that too but I feel like if we're going to believe that then have more moral innovation of how she really feels just saying overall this anime is great you're going to notice those flaws when you watch it, but just think of it like this. This is an anime that is basically an OVA ghost story, and that's how I feel. Again, if I was in a bonfire or if I end up having children, the story itself is a nightmare to tell people. And just watching it and just knowing the story by itself, just seeing that everything is all cool and that you know a best friend and y'all just end up falling off and then all of a sudden... This whole world ends up turning into a dark apocalypse and everybody around you ends up turning into zombies and you find out that the person that you don't talk to anymore is the main cause of it. It's crazy. 
it is sadistic, especially when you see your loved ones that end up dying in front of you, end up turning to zombies. You begin to see their whole faces begin to rip apart and they begin to turn into devil bats and freaking spiders and snakes. Yeah, yeah. Blood Rain does this. <laughs> it does this a lot. And I highly recommend people to not just watch this, but if y'all getting tired of saying that Ninja Scroll and Akira in perfect blue is the main masterpieces of anime that people need to watch today if they're real anime fans, fuck all those. Watch Blood Rain, The Curse of the Yoma. Then talk to me. I'm going to have to give Blood Rain, Curse of the Yoma. Hey, at the end of the day, anime is like this. Need to be talked about, need to be praised, need to be mentioned, and it needs to be watched. Because I feel like everybody jumps into the train of what is the modern day society of what animes need to be watched today, especially when it comes to the old school. And it's like it's like a nerd terminology of recommendations. Think of it as sports in a way. You don't know basketball if you don't know Michael Jordan. You don't know basketball if you don't know Stephen Curry. You don't know basketball if you don't know um, LeBron James. You don't know basketball if you don't know Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant is basically Akira. LeBron James is basically Perfect Blue. Stephen Curry is Ninja Scroll. And Michael Jordan is the nightmare of it all, uncomparable. And that is this. That is this. People may say Michael Jordan is berserk, <laughs> but I think that's too obvious. I feel like you got to dig deep into the hidden gem of society of good animes, other than the ones that people talk about in praise today, to know what is real Michael Jordan material. And I think it's blood rain, in my opinion. Now, it can be debatable, especially with me, because like I said, I have watched blood rain as a kid. I was an infant. And I got traumatically fucked up. Some people may not feel that way. <laughs> but that's all I have to say today. Please stay tuned for more of my upcoming, man. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> Please stay tuned for my upcoming anime reviews and videos. And it's your way. This is Hugo, your critic teacher. And you guys have a good day.